in the service. So let us uh, prepare our hearts to rejoice and to praise God for, for the next service. Okay, let's hear the call to worship taken from Psalm 92, verse 1 and verse 2. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Okay, we shall rise to uh, hear to meditate upon our opening hymn and let us uh, hear this hymn with uh, thanksgiving in our heart for, for our Lord who has been faithful to us at this this. Great is thy faithfulness.
we thank you for your faithfulness, how we would like to thank you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness to this uh, English service for the last 15 years. And Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, your love, your mercy, and your grace upon us, all of us. We thank you, Lord, for your give of salvation through our Lord and Jesus, uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you again for your faithfulness. God, as we uh, reach out to you, Lord, we uh, ask, Lord, for your forgiveness. We ask, Lord, for your guidance. We want to confess our sins unto you. And we want to ask, Lord, for your encouragement and your help that we can live a life that is uh, pleasing before you. Uh, and Lord, we thank you for providing everything we need. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers and your patience with us, Lord. And Lord, as we uh, celebrate our 18th anniversary, Lord, we uh, want to remember the many more who have yet to receive your love, your mercy, your grace, your faithfulness, Lord. Continue to help us, Lord, to reach out to them, that many more can come to know you, many more can come to receive this uh, wonderful gift of uh, you know, grace from you, Lord. We pray all this in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of men. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filled the fruits. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appear before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob, say. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. For they in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God, the sun and shield, and the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk, that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in me. We thank the Lord for his life. Word. As mentioned, it is our 18th anniversary. We thank all of you for your presence in uh, helping us uh, in being here to celebrate together and to thank our God together for this uh, last 18 years. We have a special item next.
special rice for premium. Almighty God, our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that Thou art the true and living God. We thank Thee that Thou art the head of the church and uh, You are our Saviour, our Shepherd, our Sovereign and also our Sanctifier. We want to thank Thee for your greatness, your goodness, and also your graciousness to all of us. Thank you for constantly reminding us that thou art our great helper, our faithful supplier, and owner of all the resources and riches. Help us to be always thankful for the salvation Thou hast granted to us. We also want to thank you for granting us good health and strength. We pray that you will continue to preserve our lives and we pray that you also continue to provide our needs. On this day, we are indeed very thankful for preserving the English service for the past 18 years. We want to thank you for all those who have uh, stepped forward to serve you in this ministry. We pray that you will continue to empower them and energize them. We also want to thank you for all those who have been coming faithfully to worship you. We pray that they will continue to come. We also want to thank you for the many poor blessings that was uh, showered upon all of us. Lord, we pray now that you will cleanse us of all our sins and unrighteousness, even as we wait upon your word, we pray that you will speak to us. We pray that your precious word will edify us. We pray that we will continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of thee, and we pray that we will, in our lives, we will shine forth for you. Even after the service, Lord, we will be presenting our offerings. We pray that you will, eat, you will bless each and every giver. And we also pray that you will continue to provide the needs of the English service. We commit this entire service to thee. We pray that you will be with us. And Lord God, we pray that you will bless us. For we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. chapter 10 verse 23 Hebrews 10 23 Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised this 
day that we all have gathered for English service 18th anniversary, I welcome all of you in the name of our blessed Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. A week ago marked the 18th year of our English service. Today we are not given to anniversary celebrations that we are used to due to COVID-19 um, restrictions. Nevertheless, we are gathered today to worship our Good Shepherd of these years and be reminded of by His word of the duty required of us. A quick recap. This ministry first started as Rehoboth English Service under the leadership of the late Elder Edmund Tay of Life Pippi Church, who was also Bethlehem's first borrowed elder. When that ministry relocated, in 2002, it was restarted as Bethlehem English Service under the leadership of Reverend Ravi Chandran. And when he departed to India in 2010 to serve as missionary in Chennai under the Binesh umbrella, the Lord has enabled this work to continue under the leadership of our senior pastor, Reverend Mani. And over the course of these years, the Lord has constantly brought souls of all walks of life, both locally and from overseas, to be ministered to. In the latest edition of these souls, we had brothers from um, Africa, Afghanistan and Bangladesh too all who studied in NUS. Some of them were not Christians, yet they heard the gospel priest and the Lord be praised. And I want to thank the Lord for everyone who has participated in one way or another in this ministry over the past years. I have not seen anyone sulk in the service of the Lord, be it sharing of service, preparing the place for service or giving a hand to pack up after the service, contributing refreshments of the tastiest kind and more. In the area of choir and church music, I must make mention of our dear brother Matu and um, also his cousins Albert and Momo. Uh, our weekly audio and uh, recordings for the service, both the Tamil and English service, is done with their help and expertise. And even the anniversary video that you just saw and the one that we had in the Tamil service was also um, with the uh, help of Brother Mato and also not forgetting Brother Moses who was coordinating all these things. And so my dear brothers and sisters, firstly I want to say this, to the glory of God, you all have thought of the church and the members first and you have not thought of giving anything but the best, for that is certainly biblical. That which the Lord has gifted you with, so you have served. The Lord bless you all and continue to use you for the edifying of the body of Christ. This year has been a very special year because of the COVID-19 situation. Uh, from April to June, we were in lockdown and although we are back together for worship, yet it is within the restrictions. Uh, may we continue to be exemplary citizens of this country through our obedience and conduct. I also like to thank uh, Reverend Benjamin Sau of Shalom Bipi Church, who is our resident guest speaker each month for bringing us God's Word cheerfully in visual form through his insightful PowerPoint presentation. This evening's sermon is from uh, Hebrews 10, 23, which uh, I just read to you. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. In this verse, the Apostle Paul is exhorting us to a certain duty as we continue our Christian living. And I think this is fitting by way of application to us today, even as we are remembering and celebrating our 18th anniversary. 
And so in this sermon, we are going to reflect on our spiritual standing in Christ as both individuals and as a church. So that we will not be merely um, celebrating the years as they roll on, but we will show forth a spiritual growth as well along with the years. So firstly, we are exhorted here to not let go of that which we have in our possession in Christ, which is firstly faith. By grace, we have in our possession the most holy faith. Faith by which we come to God. Faith that removes from us the condemnation of sin because um, faith that crowns us with God's goodness. Faith that grants us the right to be called the children of God. Faith that makes us Christians most unique among all men. Faith that overcomes the world. Faith which can look at death and say, where is thy sting? Where is thy victory? Faith for which many did lay down their lives. Stephen being the first and certainly not the last. Faith that transforms sinners to saints. The timid into courageous, the meek to mighty. Trembling though it be our faith, yet it is true. And though it does not always work in us the fruit that we would desire, yet it does operate in a very blessed way upon our walk and living. So our faith is this, my dear brothers and sisters. We believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We believe in the election of grace. We believe in the eternal purposes of God and in the working out of all those purposes to the praise and glory of His grace. We truly have faith in our possession in Christ. Faith that believes, that learns, that reclines, that trusts entirely in the love of God. A precious faith we indeed have through His grace. And of this faith, C.H. Spurgeon says this, If these both sings, I drown, for I cannot swim, and I know other lifeboat. This is the only faith that we have. Not just faith, but we also have hope. If faith is what anchors us to Christ, then hope is the rope that is attached to it. On one end of the rope is tied to the anchor, the other we hold. The starting point of hope is found in John 3.16, where he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Eternal life, my friends, is our hope. It is, this promise is as good as a promise Abraham received with regard to the promised land. Hope that causes the one seeing death take a deep breath and say, into the hands I commit my spirit body. Death does not scare us. Uncertainty does not scare us. We are hooked on this hope the moment we confess our, with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord. And our Savior draws us ever close to the realization of, the, of this hope. Day by day, moment by moment, like a fisherman drawing in the fish that is caught on his line of faith. Day by day, even as we celebrate anniversary after anniversary, birthday after birthday, we are getting closer to realizing the promised hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. That's why if you and I, even after we die today, even after right after this service, we have, we look forward to the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. The next installment of hope is the second coming of the Lord. Will it happen in our times? Why not? There are plenty of signs pointing to it, even as the Lord foretold in Matthew chapters 24 to 26. Look at coronavirus. 
Look at what is happening around the world, nation against nation, people against people, uh, kingdoms are falling, so forth. The Lord's second coming is nearer than we can think or even imagine. So what holds in the hope of the Lord's return for us? We have the blessed hope of appearing with Him in glory. Now, if it be so now that it's very cloudy, we can't see true things, that sometimes we are in agony, battling sin-stricken body and the world, tears may be the only cup of drink that we drink every day, sorrow may be the only companion at night for us, but we rejoice and look with hope for the coming of the Lord, which will change it all. Like the quick disappearing of the dark clouds, and the bright sun that it shines through. This is the glorious hope of the church over the past 2,000 years, my dear brothers and sisters. This is how the bride of the Lord expects to be victorious over the world that stands in enmity to it. The groom, the Lord Jesus, shall come and her conflict in and end her conflict in complete triumph when he shall make his enemies his it's true. This joyous, glorious, purifying, comforting, strengthening and sustaining hope is our unique possession in Christ and which, does, and which those not of Christ do not have. So if you have this hope this morning, this evening, my dear brothers and sisters, count it a blessing. Count it a price that nothing can compare to. And where faith and hope are found, love will be present too. The profession of our faith is the next focus. This we have made by word and by action, in a personal capacity and in public view too. We call the day when we bowed our hearts in private prayer, even as the Holy Spirit shed the love of God upon our hearts and we who were seated in darkness saw the light of salvation in Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank the soul who cared to share the gospel with us that we may be seated here this morning, this evening as children of faith. And also recall the day of baptism and some of us reaffirmation of faith as we stood in the presence of God and before the congregation. It was a day of great trembling, but also a great day of joy when we said what we meant. We even salted our words with our tears and felt it such an honor to be numbered with the people of God. Do you remember those days? Recall then, my dear brothers and sisters, that with that confession that we made on the day of salvation, or the day of baptism, or reaffirmation, where we rededicated ourselves to the Lord. What spring that was in our steps, what enthusiasm and eagerness with which we engaged in the things of God, worship, Bible study, prayer meeting, ministries, etc. Our late beloved pastor, Reverend Bird, having confessed Jesus Christ as his Savior in the early hours of Sunday morning, was all dressed up and ready to go to church just merely after uh, later his salvation. To the surprise and joy of the pastor who has shared the gospel with him, who incidentally was still in bed. That's the kind of enthusiasm, that's the kind of spirit, that's this kind of life that we had when we committed ourselves to Christ, remember we that every month too, we do repeat this confession as we come before the Lord's Supper, as we partake in the broken bread and the, and the, and the great wine. And at times when the Holy Spirit did stir our hearts to the priest word, we did say a big Amen to what was said and taught to us. Oh, we have made profession of our faith. If then, if our confession of our faith was not fake on that very first day, 
then let us continue in that confession without wavering. Let us continue without wavering. After all these times of swearing allegiance to the Master, would we think of deserting Him now? Just because our boat is rocked? That's because the waves are rising? That's because the storms and clouds are gathering around us? When, uh, just because we are drinking tears, a cup filled with tears and sorrow and sadness, would we want to desert our beloved Master, Lord and God, who left heaven for us? Surely not, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us instead confess Christ and our faith in Him even more, even more. Like the Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.12, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. 2 Timothy 1.12 Confess then, my dear brothers and sisters, that you belong to Christ in your daily lives, in your marriage, in your family ties, in your relationships, whether you're at work, at school, or in your dealings with, with, with others around you, by loving, obeying, and serving Christ alone. This has been the call even of the Old Testament when Joshua said, Choose whom you will serve today. If the Lord be God, serve Him. If Christ be our true Savior, let us serve Him. Let us confess Him with our lives. In light of what we have in possession in Christ of faith and hope, and what we have done having professed our faith, this one other thing we must do Hold on. That's what the apostle says in verse 23. He says, let us hold fast. The apostle here is urging us to persevere. Reverend Mani prayed just now, thanking God for preserving the church. Yes, that God has done. But now we have to persevere. That we have to do. For we are Christians and members of his body, of his body, not just for some time, not just through an 18th anniversary or 25th anniversary or even 50th anniversary, we are Christians and members of his body, the church, for eternity. For eternity. The church may change in terms of physical outlook. We are going through some mini renovation. We can see the look. Or it can change because of leadership and administration, but our core identity as Christians will never change. It cannot change. And it is our responsibility individually and as a church along with the help of God to ensure it does not change. So how to preserve it? We are to hold fast the Apostle Paul says. is the idea of having a firm grip and not letting go. We have seen in news, in flood rescue missions, where a cable is often dangled from the helicopter, from the doctor, to the stranded person below, and once he has gotten hold of that helpline, he cannot afford to let go. The, despite the fears of his, or even of his own fear of height, he, it, because if he does let go, his safety will be compromised. Such is the urgency, my dear brothers and sisters, that is exhorted by the Apostle Paul here for us. We must hold on to the faith that we have professed as being in our possession. We say, I have faith. Let me now live out that faith. Let me hold on to the faith, whatever comes may. Hold on, its, hold on to its truth, no matter what comes to sway us, from it by way of temptation or trials. We are to hold on for spiritual enemies will do what they can to wrestle our faith, hope, holiness and comfort from our hands. We must hold on tight for our religion is our life. 
We must hold on. Because many have let go, have jumped ship, and have been washed ashore, not completing the faith journey, thrown in the towel, stopped fighting, and running the race set before them. Having succumbed to the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. We don't want to do that. We don't want that to happen to us. And the manner we are to do, the force of all things, without wavering. Without wavering. The term wavering is taken from the word wave as in the wave of the sea. Whether it is the wave of the sea or the wave of your hand, what you see is movement. Waves are never predictable or steady. They are for the Simpson, he was a sailor for some time. Waves are never steady. You cannot put anything and expect to be stable on the wave. Our late mom, on her last trip to Bintan, shared this experience in a very humorous way during prayer meeting. She said that as she was awaiting, as she was awaiting the boat, to board the boat, both she and the boat were swaying. You know, so that the effect of the wave. It makes you sway, gives you unsteadiness. Wavering is like that. Matthew Henry comments this. He says. Having once settled these great things of faith and hope between God and our souls, we must be steadfast and immovable. We must be steadfast and immovable. Those who begin to waver are in the danger of falling off the faith boat, only to be washed away in the darkness of sin and the world. God is not going to prepare another fish like he saved Jonah. Jump out of the boat, they are gone. Okay. We are safe in the boat, no matter how much it drops. Because Jesus is in the boat with us, only in the boat with us, not out of the boat. And so we must persevere in the profession of the most holy faith. And there is a motive for us to do so, there is a motivation. What is that? It says in verse 23, for he is faithful that promised. He is faithful that is promised. Who is the he? It is God. The God whom Abraham, Isaac and Jacob trusted. The God whom David, Daniel and his friends trusted. The God whom the apostles, they trusted with their life. He is faithful. Proven to be faithful. He has said something and he made it to pass. He has never failed. So he is faithful that has promised. My dear brothers and sisters, these few words I picked up from C.H. Spurgeon's commentary. They are wonderful words. Let me just read them to you. He says, Have you found him faithful? Has the Lord failed you? Has the Lord been untrue in his promises to you? If he has, then do not hold fast to your faith profession. If, after all, if it has been a mistake and delusion, then give it up. He is so upfront, he says, if God has not been faithful, don't fool yourself and fool others around you and pretend that it is true. He says, give it up. Be a man and own up. But, if God is faithful, that he has done what he has promised. If he has kept his word to you and helped you in your trouble, sustained your heart under burdens, comforted you in the dark hour of trial, then deal with the Lord as he has dealt with you. Deal with the Lord as he has dealt with you. Would we be so heartless to deal otherwise with the one who laid down his life for us? Would we do otherwise to the one who has been a companion for us in our life? Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our 
sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Jesus, our beloved friend, our master, our God, our shepherd, who never, never, ever forsakes us. Even though at times we have forgotten and forsaken him. But has kept us safe, preserved us thus far. Would we turn our back on him? My dearly beloved, the Lord's faithfulness should excite and encourage us to be faithful to. That's the title of today's sermon. I'm sorry. That's the title of today's sermon. If God has been faithful, let us be faithful too. Let us then preserve, uh, sorry, let us then persevere as individuals and as a body of Christ, the church, in the profession of our faith till we see the Lord face to face. Till we see him face to face. Our coming to church in his presence is just a prelude to what we are going to experience in heaven. On this 18th anniversary, this is the Lord's word to all of us. This is the vision of the Lord for us. That to live out the full purpose of our existence as Christians and the body of Christ by holding on to our most holy faith, both in the professing and practice. Let us rise now to meditate on the closing theme which Brother Chiman will lead us in. After which I call upon the money to give us benediction also.
Let's receive the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Thank you for uh, being with us this evening as we remember the God's faithfulness uh, to this ministry. We need to pray for all of us. And um, if you are free on sun sun Sunday evenings, do come and join us. Uh, do bring friends uh, who know English they can, uh, that they may be ministered to. Uh, the service is over and God bless you and have a uh, bless a bit ahead. Uh, the offering box is uh, behind. Reverend Money has already prayed for the offering, so um, as you exit, you can uh, put in the offerings. God bless you. I uh, just a reminder: next week is morning. Next week morning, 10:30 a.m. is uh, Bethlehem's uh, annual congregation meeting. So it will be a combined service, bilingual, and um, uh, the ACM will pro proceed right after the morning service will be about 11 30 a.m next sunday so that means there will be no english service next week here so combined service right okay god bless you the service is over for this week. <coughs> Thank you.